Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another Talk Truth series, Girl Connection. Yay! Tonight brings to us, as usual, another very special guest. Yes, I know that a lot of you can tell by the description. I'm going to tell you a little bit about that later on. I hope you guys are excited. I'm excited. Welcome back to another show. I'm your host, Shani Davis. And as usual, we start off with prayer. Please remember to like and share the video. Say hi so I can know that you're here. So when I'm doing the roll call, I don't miss anyone and no one feels neglected. Shout out to all the silent viewers on Facebook and YouTube. Big up on yourself. Latavia is present. Hey, Latavia. All right. So invite people and let's get started. So let us pray now, and then I'll introduce you all to our guests. Yay. All right. So Heavenly Father, we thank you for tonight. God, we give you glory. We give you honor. We lift you up, Lord, for all that you have done, what you are doing, and what you will continue to do. God, it is you that we live. It is in you that we live, breathe, and have our being. It is in you that we find freedom, we find liberty, God. It is in you that we have this special gift each day, which is your breath of life. And so, God, as you have given us grace and mercy, we ask that you pardon us. I pray that tonight fellowship will be sweet. I pray that your people bask in your love and that someone will be reminded that you are God alone and that you save. And while we were yet sinners, Christ died. So, God, we thank you for these and other mercies. And we ask you for your continued love toward us in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you again, guys, for coming out. For those who don't know me, my name is Shani Davis. And I'm the host on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And tonight we're having Girl Connection. Our guest is, of course, a girl, a woman of God. So, guys, tonight's guest is a kingdom ambassador and a child of the true king. She was born on May, the best month of the year, oot, oot, 14, 1988, in Kingston, Jamaica, at the Victoria Jubilee Hospital. While her given name is Shereen Palmer, God himself has given her the name Ruth. She grew up in a popular community in the parish of St. Thomas. Seaforth, to be exact, Blacksmith Lane. Within her youthful years, while she attended the Seaforth High School, she became pregnant, forcing her to not conclude her secondary education. Two years later, she became pregnant with her second child. Not knowing where tomorrow's ends would meet, she started to live a licentious lifestyle. In other words, that means promiscuous. And that was for her to earn a living and also a means of survival. She was soon after relocated to Kingston. Following her relocation, she began to face even more exigent or trying times. Ladies and gentlemen of God, I present to you our special guest, Miss Shereen Palmer. Good night, Shereen. How are you? Hi, good night. How are you? You hearing me now? Yes, I'm hearing you. I'm doing well. I must say that I'm honored to have you here tonight to share your testimony. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I am honored to be here also. All right. So. We're just going to start off with a little warm-up before we get into the mm -hmm. hot seat. Just start by telling us um, who Shereen is or who Rayab Truth is and where you got that name from. Okay. So let me start by um, saying, you know, let, let me bring welcome to all of you. People might want to know where I'm from. I am from the Miracles of the Patrick Hand International under the leadership of Reverend Nicole Masters. Um, Rahab Truth 
that name was given to me by God himself. I was at a place where I did not know um, what will become of me and um, how will people accept me um, in the body of Christ if they knew where I was coming from. And I was talking to God about it, you know, crying and so forth. And then he told me, call your name Ruth. So that's how the Ruth part come into to play. And the year after, um, I was sitting on the porch while I was staying with someone. And he said to me, from rehab to Ruth. So, um, yes, that was a name given to me by God from its entitled from the downhill to the bloodline, from condemnation unto a uh, priesthood. Sherry today is a woman of fire, a woman of love, a woman that have self-worth and confidence and, you know, boost young people to that they can go forward. And I am a person who takes um, the things of God very, um, I will put it this way, um, I don't take it lightly, I take it very seriously. I am a woman who believes in the power and the authority of God. There are much further still there. I'm not really sure what's happening, so I'm just waiting to see if the person is going to come first online.
Yeah. Yep. Okay, so it looks like I'm back on. Sorry about that, people of God. I know you were excited. Um, I'm gonna try to get back, Shereen. Tell me if you can hear me. Can you hear me? No, no, no. Can everybody hear me? Try to rejoin. Um, I'm doing a sound check. <sighs> All right. Tell me if you can hear me, please. My boil, my hat. Ooh, okay, so I'm while we're waiting on Shereen to rejoin. I'm going to do a quick roll call. All right, so I'm going to do a quick roll call while our guest comes back on. All right, first person to get here, Latavia. Good night, Latavia. Shanika is here. Ricardo is here. Kadeem, Jody White, good night. Thank you for coming. Good night. Yes, Lord. Forward still is Jehovah's will. Just go and talk. We're listening. Seem like, Sha yeah, I was having some issues just now. Blogs Byron is here. Thank you for your support. Yeah, so I'm still. All right, so thank you guys for coming. In the meantime, while we get Shereen on the line. Okay, she's here. Thank God. We're not finished. not talking. All right. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> We're back. Never is the Jesus. In the light, my but him can't stop me. He in business that. Can we pray? Yes, please. Father, in the name of Jesus, mighty God, as we come before you, God, we give you all the glory, God, we give you all the honor. You deserve all the praise, all power, and all dominion belongs to you, the ruler of the heavens and the earth. Father, we place tonight before you, God. Father, we back back the plow of the enemy. Father, we decree and declare our free flow in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, that your people, oh God, can be touched, mm -hmm. your people can be delivered in mm -hmm. the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father, arise on our behalf and let every enemies be scattered in the mighty name of Jesus. God, we thank you for what it is that you're doing and what you are about to do. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. In Jesus' name, amen. May I roast. <laughs> thank you. And thank you. My heart. You, you would even understand, but let us proceed. We're not giving, we're not giving the enemy no glory. Let's proceed. Guys, thank you for staying tuned. Um, Shereen, please continue. Who is Rehab to Ruth? Or where did you get that name? Re okay. As I was saying earlier, that name was given to me by God. I was at a place where I was suffering from condemnation. And I was wondering how people is going to view me or, or, you know, treat me knowing where I am coming from. And I was sitting on our tree and I began to cry that day and I pour up my heart and I said, God, how will people accept me knowing where I am coming from? 
And a few days after that, he gave me an answer, say, call your name, Ruth. And I said, okay. I could not make the connection. Why? At that point. And it was a year after that he has given me from rehab to Ruth. I was sitting on the porch at the place that I was staying. And he said to me, from Rahab to Ruth. And then he began to show me the visions and the mission of what Rahab to Ruth is about. So Rahab to Ruth is about transforming lives from the downhill or from nothing to something, as they were saying, you know, today's world. From the downhill to priesthood. Meaning from devaluation to valuation. In spite of where you come from, what background you come from, what you did, it goes to show us that the blood of Jesus prevails. It flows high, it flows low, and it's, um, it can transform any situation or anybody who is willing and able to go forward in Christ. Interesting. Yeah. I feel like mega. <laughs> my God is so amazing. He has a way of supernaturally changing lives. Like he he reaches down at our lowest state mm -hmm. every time mm -hmm. to reassure us of our true value in Him. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. God is amazing. He is amazing. Okay. All right. So continue now to tell us what happened after you got the revelation, Rehab to Ruth. How did your journey begin? Wow, well, my journey, trust me. My journey was never easy. I can tell anybody that it was never, ever, ever, ever easy. Sometimes God gives us um vision but he never tell us how to get there it's in that you have to bury yourself in fasting and prayer and drawing closer to get direction i am not a person who um speak let me give you um sub synopsis of my background i grew up my mother is an, as an unsown mind my father was a musician. My mother passed away. My father passed away. So I grew up not knowing the love of a mother or father or, or anything. And I was living with a family member at the time. You know, if you don't know love, then you cannot show it. So that part of my life was lacking. In that, I did not have the right foundation to help to grow me into uh, 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 a a a well-rounded young woman, as you would say. Um, I wasn't able to read. I could not read properly. I could not even write a sentence properly. The only thing I really had going for me was that I was beautiful. That was the only thing that I really had going for me. So, um. And, and, and that was one of the reasons why I entered prostitution anyway. Um, coming into God, coming in line with God. And God is saying, I am sending you to nation. It's going to be hard for a person like me to believe. Knowing where I am coming from. Knowing who I am at that state. When I got the vision. And this was like three years ago. I did not have the the, the self-esteem or the confidence that I could go in front of somebody and, and, and tell them about God, if you understand what I'm saying. So that journey that I have taken, I, I have no saying it, to God be the glory. Everything was done to him, for him, by him, right? That journey was a very... Trust me, it brings forth a lot of pain. It helps me to see me and who I really was. So I was, so I could be able to 
transform. I was, you know, I had to be polished. Just saying. Um, it take me totally out of my comfort zone. And uh, I just didn't know how I was going to do that. But in that, I get to bury myself in God. So he could have, you know, lead me into the path. Remember, I am a person that cannot read. I don't put on events. I don't do anything. I, I, I'm not going out there to talk to anybody because I'm like a Moses. I have a speech impediment. Right now, I am talking to you. It's not because of my level of education. It's just the pure, raw Holy Spirit. That's that that's that's what's talking to you right now. Because I couldn't even, you know, put my sentence together. And um, but 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 then, but when you begin to see God for who He is, and understand the will that he has for you or the purpose that he has for you then fear will step out faith will not step in I had a lot of fear a lot of uncertainty but to God be the glory I have overcome it and this is why I can be on this platform talking to you before now I will never do that because I am just I would just be afraid of saying I, I don't know if I'm going to say something wrong. I don't know if I can put my words together, if you understand what I mean. So um, the journey, the journey from, from, from self-condemnation to self-worth, it's really a process. Trust me. And I can say to anybody, it is a process. When God is trying to get you to believe that you are this person, when you see that person, Trust me, only take the power of God. So it was the power of God all along on my journey. I could have never done it by myself. I still don't know how I I, I do it. But mm -hmm. I just have to lean on the arms of God. Yeah. And all glory and honor to him. Um, I want you to tell us now, how did your experience affect your self-esteem we're still warming up guys we'll soon get to whatever it is you came here for how did your journey affect your self-esteem you say you couldn't talk in front of people mm -hmm. you didn't think you could you, you would have talked and don't make a mistake how else did it affect your self-esteem because i know a lot of people cower in fear after having a past right you can't face the world again all right, as I said, the fear, mm -hmm. sorry, and mm -hmm, it affects me. It, 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 it affects me um, really, 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 really bad. It really affects me. Um, the condemnation was real. Um, I just could not see myself as a regular Christian or a regular, you know, you know, somebody that grew up in the church or a regular woman based upon you know the journey my journey from where god is, it is taking me it, it it affects me a lot especially when people you know around you try to push yes yeah. like your prostitute they used to be a prostitute right there so you know what i mean it affects yeah, yeah, yeah. It affects me in in, in a, in a negative way also a positive way. it goes to show um that God is all powerful. Mm -hmm. All right. Cool. I used to worry. Mm -hmm. No man, go on, go on. <laughs> All right, tell us about, right, do you have any regrets about some of the decisions that you've made on your journey? All 
All right, so we're having some obvious technical difficulties. I'm gonna take the comments in the meantime. Let me see where I left off. <laughs> All right, so Melibu, I will get back to your question in a few minutes. Um, technical difficulties. So I'm going to check to see who else is saying something. We are going to get to that. Don't worry. All right, let's see who else is talking. Shana K is here. Kadian is here. Ernie. In feel long time. In feel. Hi, Deandra. Shay is here. From nothing to something. And you know why we're having this trouble tonight? Because a lot of persons are supposed to be inspired by this story. From nothing to something is will always be relevant. And we need this story. We need the testimony to go out. Because God must get the glory. Melinda, Terry, good night. Thank you for yeah. coming. You ready now? All right. Continue. <laughs> Hmm. All right, guys, I'm not sure what is happening. Internet providers, calm down, please. So Shanika says, strongest soldiers get the hardest fight. Your background wasn't a mistake. It contributes to your no situation. When Paul met Jesus on the Damascus Road and he was charged, his zealous nature never changed. It was used for good. Him did get polished real good. No. Your past now have nothing to do with God. Him use it same way. See God say, your sentences well together all right she's cracking up okay we're fixing that that means they don't believe in the transformation power of the holy spirit if they're gonna tell you that you are a prostitute and treat you some type of way then they don't believe god simple we don't need no more than that when i need no more explanation that is it them not believe <clears throat> All right, so I think she's going to have to use a different device or I'm going to have to close this and use my phone. Just a second, guys. All right, she's here now. Yeah. 
is by my, but Jesus will be glorified. I'm about to restart this live and use my phone because okay. I don't know what is happening. All right, let's continue if we can. Thank you guys for being so patient. Yeah. All right, so do you have any regrets about the about some of the decisions that you've made in your younger years that would have led to um, you becoming a prostitute? Would you say that you regret your, your, um, your testimony or your past? No. Mm -mm. I don't mm -hmm. forget my past because my past contributes to who I am today. So my past was the ladder for me to be where I am and who I am today. So I, I, I embrace my past. Right. All right. Embracing our past. Do you believe that God chose you? Yes. Yeah. Why? Yes, I definitely believe that God has chosen. How oh, the hell that I've been through? You have to be chosen to go through all of this. <laughs> you know, some people have this way of saying that God is you. This is not you. God, oh, you feel me? Me go through this. Oh, you feel me? This happen to me. When God is purifying us, we go through some stages that we there to the end of the day we see the finish. Well I'm not sure because I see it going out and coming. Hold on. I think I want you to call okay. in because I don't know. Call in. Okay. Hmm? I'm going to call you just a sec because... guys who are still here please accept my apologies for this i don't know what is happening tell me if you can hear shireen say something yeah i can hear okay viewers who are watching tell me if you can hear 
or me need to just use my phone, just close this and use my phone. Can't take the stress. <clears throat> People, let me know if you can hear. All right, go ahead, Shereen, because I don't know if we are going. Okay. So where were we? I was saying that you said based on the hell that you went through, most persons, if they had your testimony, maybe they wouldn't even see it as an opportunity to get souls for God. Then when I said, boy, God, this is definitely not you. <laughs> yeah, because they're focusing on the negative part. They're not focusing that if God is is taking them through it. Mm -hmm. All right. right. In, in order for the glory of God to be revealed, mm -hmm. there has to be a breaking and a shaking. Yes, sir. <laughs> right. Somebody say break. Break. What do you mean by breaking? Just elaborate for us a little bit. What do you mean by breaking? You breaking, you don't look broken enough? Okay. Trust One. Me. I have been. All right. Um, through the life, well, uh, let, let me see. Let me see if I can use Moses. Mm -hmm. Before Moses came in his to um purpose yeah did you remember what happened to him no i remember him saying he couldn't talk and him put up air and for the and talking right. oh his mother had to put him in the basket him got on on the stream got down in a fear of us yeah my oh. story is somewhat similar to that yeah but I'm talking about the breaking when he had to run away and go in the desert and go to another man's land. Yes, yes, yes. Right. And Moses never knew that what happened was God preparing him mm -hmm. for purpose. Yes, sir. But in my life, I could say, all the hell that I've gone through, God was preparing me for purpose mm. Mm. if i don't go through something then how can i witness to that person yeah if i never been to prostitution how would i witness to a prostitute Quite if so. i've never been abused how can i witness to an abused person if i never been lied on how could I witness to a person that has been lied on? Mm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So in all the hell that I am going through, God was with me. And mm -hmm. that is what I want to encourage somebody. In spite of what it look like and what it feels like, God is in it. So well on there, in a in a time of hell, because we know what the Bible say, um, I believe it in Psalms that even if you make your bed in hell, God is there with you, right? When did right. you realize your purpose in that hell? Because there must have been a point where you feel like God, honestly, I when when me go get a break, like me tired, when this I go done, me can't take it no more. I really can't. When it, when did you, how you realize your purpose in a problem? All right, it goes back from when I was small. Mm -hmm. I knew that there was something different about me. Yeah. And it go back to the 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 word that was spoken over my life at eight years old. Mm hmm. Right. I was. Always different. I just never knew what the purpose was. How different were you? And uh, I was just, all right. Things I 
normally chil- normal children do, mm-hmm. I don't really do that. I play by myself. I teach every plan. At one point, they thought that I was retarded. Mm-hmm. And then I had a, I would have said a relationship. Now that I, I am more mature and I understand, I had a relationship with God. Because I will sing, I will worship, and the presence of God will just fill the atmosphere. Regular children don't do stuff like that. Mm. I will like talk to God at all times. I will pray at all times. Yeah, that's what I mean. Mm-hmm. So I knew that something was different. The interest that I should have had as a child, I did not have it. All I wanted to do is just sing. Because that made me feel something. It made me experience something <laughs> that I can't, we can't explain. Mm-mm. Right. So all along, I knew there was a purpose. But I just never know what was the purpose. Mm. Just like with Moses. When the Lord said he's going to send somebody, you know, to a freedom from slavery, Moses was born and he, he must have known that he was purpose, but he did not know that was the purpose. Yeah. Because if every baby died, male child died, and Moses lived, grow up in the house of Pharaoh, mm-hmm. he has to be purpose. Yes, yes. Yeah. So that is so that is so what my 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 story. So in spite of 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 what I've been through, mm-hmm. and all the time I go through stuff, I will always talk to God. Yeah. Even in the deepest depths of sin, I will talk to God. Tell us about some of the hardships that you've been through. All right. One, the hardest thing for me is that I did not have the love of a mother or a father. I always wanted that. Mm-hmm. Two, growing a child without a father, then the things that you have to do as a single mother, if I wanted to buy a diaper for my son, I have to use my body. If I wanted him to get some last or something, I had to use my body. I never really have a solid home. Mm -hmm. I was always there this minute or there that minute. Um, People never really used to value me as anything. And after doing that, and I entered into prostitution, um, God protected me in that, in that, in that to be honest. Mm-hmm. But there were times when things get really rough. So rough to the point that at one point I went to a, a reader man. And he told me, change my ways, I'm going to God. Jesus Christ. We need a commercial break. Right. <laughs> commercial. Continue. Lord God. So, someone had asked earlier how you went into prostitution, but you gave us the answer. Hardship. You wanted love. And you basically, mm. you were alone. And you had children to support. Did you ever right think now. you could probably get a job, like maybe at? No, I did not have that confidence because I can't read. Hmm. 
So I did the owner. See, I, this is what I said. I'm not going to sit down with all of this. And then me and the child die of hunger. So I'll make up in my mind that I have to do this. Mm. Right. Okay. All right. So the transition now, you came through that. Mm -hmm. Where was your mindset during the time that you were hustling or living this life that you made up in your mind? Where was your mind at the time? Were you wondering, like, God, when is this going to happen? Can you say you had a relationship with God from the earliest stage of your life? When will this end? What else am I going to have to go through? You know? What next? Yeah. I used to pray a lot. And I always say this, I was a praying prostitute. So you prayed for your I clients? I was walking on the pole mm -hmm. and praying. I will lie on my back okay. with my two feet talking in here. All okay. that is going on down there, I'm yeah. still praying. My God. God will. When are you going to take me out of this? Mm. Yeah. Did you ever think you were going to die in it? At some point, I thought so because other people died, but God was always protecting me. Mm -hmm. All right. But I just, I, I just, I just become so uncomfortable. It's like, and then the earth for God was more. I, 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 I feel like that I have to go. And then I said, God, if you get me out of this, I will serve you. Hmm. Because even as a prostitute, I used to fast and pray when it was coming down to that time. <laughs> there was just this something inside that I want God. But hmm. I have to go to prostitution in the night. Yeah, yeah. There's a need. Right. Right. So, um, in the last, that's where the fasting and the prayer comes in. Mm -hmm. Because I, 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 I got desperate. And oftentimes people will come in and say, you don't belong here. Yeah. You look like a pastor's wife. Mm -hmm. You look like a pastor. You look like you grew up in a church and all them 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 from them. So it just it, it used to crush me. Mm -hmm. But I had nothing else to do. What am I going to do? I mean I can't yeah. need Yeah. I even take all my money and try to go to school that don't work out for me. I don't understand nothing. Mm. What you understand And I today. don't believe that I could have actually learned. Yeah. So basically you wanted to do it, but your inner man say, me can't do it. Me can't make it. Me can't learn nothing. You know what I'm saying? Right. See yourself sabotage. I'm you want to come out, but you I'm sabotage here. yourself. Mm-hmm. I get you. Always push to try love and always tell them that they are good enough. Mm. Because of the self esteem issue that was a down for me. Because yeah, yeah, you're not gonna come out to be nothing. Mm. You can't come out to be nothing. You're gonna come out to be the worst. Yeah. Yes, that's true. It happens. That even when I mean, mean you know, people were up there, I just said we will bother myself to be in them company. Mm -hmm. I am not going to stop because I don't want to make a mistake. <laughs> what was one so, of the worst experiences you had? When I met my 
my husband. And my husband is a well educated person. And we went, I think we went to a dinner with some of his friends. And they begin to ask me questions that the words were foreign to me. I didn't understand nothing that they were saying. I don't even know what to reply. And then I said to myself that, you know, I need to be better. The urge come, I want to be educated. Mm -hmm. I want to be able to speak to people mm -hmm. and not feel like I'm less than. Yes. So after coming out of that when I, when I met, because I met my husband in prostitution, he was a prayer that God answered. <laughs> right. And uh, I tend to have more value, way more than I had in, in, in prostitution. So no, you know what? I want to do something with my life. So I started music. Hmm. Uh, after my husband spent millions, get ripped off, all of that, nothing comes from it. And I say, God, if you open this door for me, well, promise me I will serve you. Remember, you know, mm -hmm. God deliver me. <laughs> From prostitution, I make yeah. a vote to God. You know? Yeah. <laughs> after I come out of prostitution, you know, I do sharing do our own thing, you know. Yeah, man, that's how we stay. <laughs> so I started music. I want to do something for myself. I mm -hmm. started music, but God would not allow it at all. The right song, the right producer, everything, but I could never get a break free. Mm. And I remember the last time I said, God, if I do it, some of me are not serving the world. You know, I think God has a sense of you, man. You know, I'm not serving the world. <laughs> <laughs> so nothing happened. Oh, God. I tried going back to school. I tried doing bartending. Nah, Jesus. I tried doing, you know, other little stuff. And Mommy it never worked. Even though I went to school. So how did you transition? I to be a life Yeah, so, so how did you transition into Christianity now that you, you met the answer to your prayer? God determined now to get you where you promise him, you know? You make a promise, you make a vow. Right. What did he do now to right. get you to make that transition into the sanctified right. world? I want to say this to people. Don't think that you're going to make a vow to God. Keep it. It's a dangerous ground to tread on. After I came out of prostitution and I started doing the music business, I go to church and say, yes, God, I'm going to give it to your new ears. Oh, I have a timetable. Oh, I go to church. Because hmm. guess what? I am no longer in that position. I'm not feeling for anything. So, you know, the relation, relationship with God just... Hmm. So, I will go to church. now a new ears. On Easter, and I will go to the altar and I will cry and I say, Yes, God, I ate this. And when I walked to the door, that was it. All the time I've been going to an altar and say, Yes, God, is it? And when I walk out, it's something different. But the Lord did something to me, and I am grateful. I'm rejoicing. Mm -hmm. I became so sick. Hmm. Nobody could have found what was happening to me. 
And that is when I said, God, I didn't say, God, if you heal me, no, me I will serve you. Enough. Just run. I said, God, no, me I will serve you. Mm -hmm. Because I was so sick to the point of death. Seem sick. I could literally feel like it's like a tough between the, 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 the spirit and the body. And I knew that I was going to make it to the end of the week. And I, I remember this friend came back in my life and I tell her to take me to the church. And when she came to the church, the pastor told me, I can't pray for you tonight, come back tomorrow. I get not in your six years, you're desperate. What? That makes sense. I have to cry out to God. I have to cry to God for myself. And I think that's where God wanted me. Because maybe if I've gone to the altar and the pastor prayed for me, I would have done the same thing. Mm -hmm. But God wanted to give me an encounter that will hold me. Not this time I'm going to turn away. But God met me mm. in my own state. Yes. And from that day on, there was a hunger. There was a thirst for God. The things of God. I said, God, okay, I am giving it to you. I remember I had some piercing on my ears. Mm. And I, I, it was like three months into them piercing, I got saved. All my life, I said I would never pierce myself or put on a tattoo. Because, you know, in the in the, the exotic business, tattoo is the thing. But I just could not do that. And at that day, when I, when, when, that night, when God, um, yeah, I got that encounter from God, he said to me, strip yourself. No, I had piercing all the way up here. Mm -hmm. uh, because everywhere I go, even in the music business, people tell me that I look like Christians. So I want to kill that so <laughs> What do you say? Yeah, everywhere I go. Mm -mm. I remember my husband got me a voice coach. And she told me that I'm supposed to sing gospel. Yes, sir. Right. No, I don't want to sing that song. I want to sing reggae fusion. Yeah. She said, your sound is a sound of a gospel singer. Mm-hmm. Purpose I call it. Run, go on, no? Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I run, I run, I run, I run. So that night I got an encounter with God that I did not get at the altar. Mm -hmm. The wind of intercession immediately sit on me. It wasn't me. It was so magical. And then after that, I, from a day-to-day -day basis, I become whole again. Then the fire of God mm -hmm. just sits inside of me. Mm -hmm. The thing, it, it, let me tell you something. You see, domestic us ruin with Paul. Yeah. That was my domestic. Instantly stop everything. That was me instantly. Mm -hmm. Every appetite for everything, music, everything just died. Yeah. It looks like I came into the person who God has ordained to me to be from beginning of earth. Mm -hmm. Everything that I used to, it was like I'm in a foreign place. Mm -hmm. And you know what? After all this time, I um, tried to get an edit in the music business. When I gave my life to Christ, did you know that's when I got a, um, a connection to go to Canada to do Love music? God. <laughs> and, 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 and I paid for music video. Jesus. And I started to negotiate with God and I started to think about the money. Mm -hmm. Money that I spent. I said, all right, God, let me go through this video. And then, and the Lord said to me, no. 
And he said, all right, God, let me just go to Canada and make some money and come back. And he said to me, no. And then more doors open because I got the offer to travel with a certain set of entertainers to do opening acts for them. Mm-hmm. Right as I become a Christian. Yeah. But God had a different plan. Yes, yes, yes. All right, so you mentioned the money, right? People normally with a dire need for, you know, when your basic needs have to be met, the money, talk, cool, but go back up a little bit. So while you were in sin and a fend for yourself, obviously you must have developed a love for money. Now you come over and the flesh I say, Shireen, I could go make some money and come back. So God did have to steal the voice there and quiet down the little flesh. I said, all right, ease yourself and me I do this thing. So yeah. I remember um, right. I was listening to, because I do my research, may have to. I was listening to an interview where yeah. you said that you try to get a job. Yes, you need the money. Some things that you had to go through to get the money. What I'm trying to understand is the mindset behind. Can you say you make up in your mind for the prostitution so you could take care of yourself and your baby? Mm-hmm. I want to get to the mindset behind. Because sin, people give sin power. What was the mindset behind you going to get that job? And whatever the people them say if you do, if you get the money, you are going to do it. How you know yourself? Like, <laughs> get it after prep. There is no, no me thing that. Um, when I left my son at home, mm-hmm. right, when I tried to get the job, I did not know what I was getting into. It says, F1 kid, massage center, and you don't have to be trained, but you must be over 80. You know what? I was 21. So I left my baby at home with one pampas and Alaska. And I went because I did not know where anything else is coming from. Okay. And when I went there, and then I realized what has to be done to get the job. First, I can make up my mind to do it. Then after I realized it never really has to be like that. I made up my mind that if either I go through this or stay at home with a hungry child. So my mindset, it, it, it was at a place that I wasn't even thinking about me. Mm-hmm. I trying to see anything about me, it was just the child. And if it had mean at that time that this is what I had to do, this is what I had to do. What was it that you had to do? When I went to the job to, 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 to do the massage, mm-hmm. the, the, the owner for the, the massage parlor tell me that, you know, it has to train me. But in that training was him having intercourse with me all night. And this was not something abusive for me, even though in my community I used to flaunt myself. For money, of course. Okay. Right, so. But it wasn't like that, though. So, you just do it because you had a need. That's all. I had a need. So, we can't cost nobody. We do them night work or them day work or them midday work because it's just 
a need. All right. It's a need. Let me tell you something. If you um sit down with something that is in there currently, mm. you will bring tears to your eyes. I tell people don't judge them. You know? So the Lord tell me to call them and say, woman of God. Mm -hmm. I said, okay, girl. I'm going to say, all right, I'm going to go back for them. I'm going to go to the And the Lord said, no, call them woman of God. But they are mine. Some of them even have, have some, some, some rough experience in life. Some of them are at the place that I was because I talk to these people all the time. They don't know how to get out. They don't know how the world will accept them. But believe it or not, you know, the world does not make it easy for them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That is something that they have to live with. Just like me. The thing about it is that just God, God just gives me a beautiful bonus to override whatever thing the enemy is saying. But I'm talking about persons that were at the place that I was at. It's, it's not easy. It's, mm -mm. it's not easy. And I urge people to pray. When you pray at night, say a prayer for them because they need it. Yeah. They, 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 they go through so much abuse. A lot of them lose their lives. Mm -hmm. And they want love like oh, we want love. A lot of them have like five children, no father. Because let me tell you something. You see, um, some man, and, and I just believe that some situation I trust certain man. Hmm. I just believe that. They will come and they will say, yes, they want to make things right with them because I have had encounters like that before. That guy said, yeah, man, uh, you know, I want to make a life with it and all of that. But I think that I was one of the smart ones. We never really fall for it. And they give in to this stuff. And then when they look, they have a baby and then the man gone and then they have another baby and then... And before you know it, they're trapped in prostitution. A lot of these people are way intelligent than I am. Hmm. Wow. So, it, it, trust me, it, it, if, if, if you could have get an idea of how out there it is, hmm. trust me. So, are Let's there any major lessons learned from this journey? Any major lessons that you would like to impart on our viewers? All right. The lesson that I have learned is that never walk out of the will of God. Mm. When you walk out of the will of God, there's mercy the earth will extend to you, yeah. but no sin goes unpunished. Mm. And that was my story. Mm. So now you're like a, a polish or a pallet. Now you have to be going to the churches and exhorting men and women in the name of Christ, you know? Be comforted. Somebody who was in the same spot that you were. Because every time Paul goes somewhere, the memory is like what he did, basically staying them in a way where... He has to keep defending his right as now a born again. Cool? Right. He has to now tell them that, yes, I used to prosecute the church. No, I am representing Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Is right. I, 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 I admire your courage for doing this. But no, it's not of you alone. God gave you that boldness to share and to declare who you are in him. But I can imagine how you feel like Paul. Everywhere Paul go, Paul has to be telling people, I no longer persecute the church. I am on your side writing all of these right. letters. But um, the, dif the difference between me and Paul mm -hmm. is that those people had fear. Yes. Of what Paul would have done. 
Mm. Me is just a stigma. Yeah. But when you see me, I do not look like where I'm coming from. Yes, yes. You have no other, you have no other choice. Just, just than to say that is a woman of God. You cannot mistake it. Yeah. When I tell people that I was a prostitute, they don't believe. <laughs> Why would they? <laughs> Why would they? Trust. They're not gonna. Be, they don't believe. You and know. I, I have to sit down and open up of the stories. And tell them, and them like you, you. Let me tell you, this is a product. Yeah. Of God, and, and it, it takes me a rough time to get here because I had to be cut, mm-hmm. put together, polished. Yes. I know what suffering is in Christendom. Mm-hmm. All of this never come overnight. I had to be homeless. I have to have a, I, I, at that time where I was going to send my son to school. Mm-hmm. At that time, I didn't know where the next me was coming from. I was almost for practically two years. And in the last of it, I was sleeping in a car that God gave me on the street. And when I tell people this, they may not believe me. Yeah. Would you believe you, Nada? <laughs> Trust me. I have been through it. I have been through it. When I was this of this this like this right? Mm-hmm. At one point I I I I, I fling out one wanted to lick God. Jesus. I was so angry at God. How could you take me from a life where I was comfortable and you put me into this? Where people look down for me, talk about me, treat me bad. Me not have any way to live. Me not have food to eat. Mm-hmm. It was trust me. But now the glory of God. Yeah. Jesus has to go to it, you know. The death and the resurrection. I am in my resurrection season. Mm-hmm. That's why when you look at me, I don't look like the grave. Yeah. If you look at me now, you see the glory of God revealed. Yeah. All right. Um, I I was looking, I was actually looking in the comments to see if there were any questions, but persons were just really enthralled by your testimony. So I only see one question here from Latavia. It says, How did you for how did your former life affect your marriage? It is done. My marriage get affected when I choose to serve God because of the things that I have done. Yeah. Like period, you spend over a million dollars trying to put your wife into music and all of a sudden to drop it. Like at bread and all about this Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Everybody's yeah, going to think I'm crazy. Mm-hmm. But I want God to put it back together. But it, it, it does not affect my marriage at all. The good thing about it, that's why I know that my husband didn't come as his own. <laughs> he don't see what other man would have seen. Well polished. On, uh, well polished huh. listen miss broken to be blessed you come up and give god your alabaster box and all of these things we can't see i i really don't see that's what i tell you i i can't see who you were talking about that must have been your twin sister who died some years ago can be you so now, who is Shireen today, now that you've been transformed? Who are you today? No longer a slave, though. Come on. I am a woman of freedom, yes. Say like a louder. Power and fire. Mm-hmm. I am a woman that have a drive, even yes. a fire. 
to go forward. Tell people my story. Yes. Set the captive free from the bondage of condemnation, mm -hmm. homosexuality. Yes, come on. I have low self esteem, no self worth. I am on fire for Christ and the purpose of Christ will make manifest in me. Yes. That's who I am. Mm -hmm. I don't do things because I can do it. I am supernaturally empowered or empowered by the glory and the grace of God. I am confident in who I am. I am confident in who God has called me to be. Yes. And I will stand in that position that God has placed me. Amen. 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 All right. So what if you were speaking to someone like you know? Someone who is maybe caught in between opinions, you know? They want to get out of prostitution. They want to get out of the, 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 the strip club, the bars. They want to get off the streets. What kind of encouragement can you give them? I can only encourage you if you want to be encouraged. How desperate are you for a change? Mm. If you're not desperate, then I could tell you anything. And it goes to this here and come over to the other. But if you are desperate enough yeah. for a change, God is able. Yes. Let me tell you something. God takes pleasures in darkness to bring forth his light. Come on. If you have a mocking situation, that's a perfect position for a miracle. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter what you feel, what people say, what you have done. God is still able to transform your life. If you get desperate enough and Give him a chance in your life. Just give him a yes. I mean that yes. I don't mean a yes because I want for a situation to change. No. But give him a yes for him to transform. Yes, you're going to be broken. Yes, you're going to cry. But the glory of God will be revealed in you. Mm -hmm. The power and the majesty, the sovereignty of God will be evident in your life. If you want Give it, him a chance. Mm -hmm. only if you want it, you know what I said? <laughs> if you are desperate enough, <laughs> when you are desperate, mm -hmm. and if you should read the word of God, you'll see that every act of desperate brings forth faith that births a miracle. Yes, yes, when you are desperate enough, you will believe. That God can change your situation, yes. you will hold on to it, and then you will see the miracle. Some will happen instantly, some gradually. It will happen. But let me tell you something get desperate. Mm. Desperation. Yes. Prove your level of faith in the sovereign God. And who he is. Mm -hmm. When you come in alignment with that, you will be able to break forth from any boundaries or any barrier. Nothing in this earth realm can be able to hold you from that transformation. Yes, come on. Nothing, no principalities, no power, mm -hmm. not even mind binding. Spirit nope. will be able to keep your bones. Amen. You will be free yes. because the word of God says, He who the Son sets free is free indeed. free indeed. And it also said, It's no longer me, but Christ that lives in me. And if Christ is seated in heavenly places, yes, that means 
when I give God my yes, the Holy Spirit come and sit down. Then I know be adapted to heavenly places. That means everything that man has said, everything what the situation look like, have now been what demolished mm. and Christ be perfected in you. What are some of the things that you had to denounce or renounce coming over into Christ? Like some of the thoughts, you know, some of the emotions. You know, I um I remember when you were talking, I remember the, the prostitute that married Hosea. Hosea married that prostitute. So God allowed it for him to understand Israel's what's the word I'm looking for? Lord Jesus. Oh no, understand what I mean. Israel unfaithfulness, yeah. right? What are some of the things that you had to like get like kill, like destroy, call fire upon it? Because you mean to go right on. Tell us some of the things that you had okay. to get rid of. The enemy had me in such a way mm -hmm. that it doesn't matter who that man is. Yeah. If I said I'm going to get that man, I'm going to get him. And I don't want him. If you understand what I'm saying. Lord God. I, I become... So normal, so mm -hmm. human doing the, the, the you know the practices and you get over, over that. I become so numb to that that I was such a player, a billion and a break you that mm -hmm. I had to get rid of because that was the spirit of deception. Mm -hmm. Um, I wouldn't say I have that great love for money. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say that, but I had to denounce that. Sexual immorality because let me tell you something. The enemy has educated me in such a way about sex. I can tell you everything. The biceps, the triceps, the ins and the outs about sex without even having seen it. You are a little lady, sir, then you used to train man too. <laughs> <All> right. <laughs> right. Somebody so, come take me off. <laughs> so um I was at that place, mm -hmm. you know. I, I, I was an ambassador for sex. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I would take good people and turn them bad. Yeah, mm -hmm. good man and turn them mm -hmm. other ways. Those things I had to, I denounce mm -hmm. because I was working for the trust me, I was an executive in the devil. Mm -hmm. Second to the yeah, end. So yeah, man. Yeah, so. I had to denounce um, a lot of sexual immorality, same sex, because yes. I explored a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, I used to do girls also. So I had to denounce that. My God. Yeah. My God. I never have a problem with like stealing and all them things, no. But where, you know, the, the, the sexual parts and the, the using and abuse and yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have to denounce a lot of that. And I and I promise that a man that I will marry them. Lord Jesus. Knowing that I won't marry them. Mm -hmm. And then take their money. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's always person. pregnant. Mm -hmm. Always pregnant. Always need the money to do a abortion. So My I have I, I, done it. I've, there is nothing that I can think of. That is happening in two days where I have passed through. My God. But God. No, there is no, God. therefore, there is no more condemnation, no condemnation. to them that are in Christ. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Jesus. All of the urges done. Amen. All, of All right. Somebody's asking if Palma is a is a I have another Palma online. No, it's not. My married name is Caesar. All right. Guys, we are boiling down. This has been a lot for one night, for me especially. Me a young bud. But thank you, Shereen, for coming out and 
exposing the enemy for who is. I don't know if we have no time for doing a part two. People, if you don't want part two, you don't let Shereen know. Um, guys, thank you for participating. Do you have any more questions for Shereen? Please remember to like and share the live, guys. All right, Shereen. So any last words of encouragement for the women who are struggling with their past, self-worth, you know? What can we do as women to not feel pressured to turn bad? <laughs> okay. Into part two. My word of encouragement mm -hmm. is don't dwell on the past. Let your past be a token to your future. And if you're at a place that you cannot overcome the past, mm -hmm. rechannel your mind and start to speak God yeah. concerning that. Because the fact of the matter is, I did not get over it by myself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was the power of God the Holy Spirit that helped me to overcome. But I can promise you that when you begin to bury yourself in God mm -hmm. and see less of you, see more of God, then people will have no choice. They, 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 they're not going to be able to talk before you. Yeah. Because then they see the glory of God will be revealed. So if they want to keep it behind you, that's okay. That's where you want it to be. Mm-hmm. And if somebody, this is another um, statement, if somebody constantly bringing up your past, forgive them because guess what? They are the ones that did not get over your past. Mm -hmm. You don't have to stay there. If they want to stay there, let them stay there. Move forward. Know who you are in God. Know the sovereignty of God and let the light of God set up all to into your greater destiny. Yes, yes, yes. I love that. I love that point. You, you are now the, the founder of the Rehab to Ruth Foundation. What do you right. do in that in such a ministry? Tell us. Okay, I evangelize. Mm-hmm. I go out and evangelize. Yes. Um, I will pray for people. I will give advice to people. The ministry is growing. Right? It is growing with the help of my leader. Um, trust me, I really love that woman, you know. Yeah, um, she's my mama. And she has a major part in my growth and development mm -hmm. also. All right, you know, there are prayers and encouragements and so forth. And, you know, uh, uh, she, she, don't really, she don't see a prostitute. Okay. She see a product of grace. Yes, yes. Why not? You know, and she really inspires me. She really inspire me. Mm. I look up to her a lot. Yeah, she's like her role model. All right. Okay, yeah. cool. All right. So I believe we are at the close. Um, I'm not sure if it's okay to ask you about the conference. If 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 you're gonna be doing it virtually, so persons who are interested can participate. All right. Um. In terms of the conference, mm -hmm. I will make a, I'm going to do a live to the, to, to the, because we have sold a lot of tickets. Mm -hmm. And what the government is saying now, I even tried to contact them today concerning that because I realized that they did not say anything about the, the convention and anything in the entertainment area. And they they still allow entertainment to you know go for they just decrease for like fifty persons. Mm -hmm. But worst case scenario, if the ticket is still valid, 
but we might have to change the name. But um, today, mm -hmm. I will be going live for those maybe who, who are here. Yes. And I will give further information. Mm -hmm. But everything is set for the conference. But mm -hmm. if I do not get the go ahead, I might have to just change the date. Mm -hmm. Not a problem. Right. All right. So we're boiling down, guys. Thank you for tuning in to Rehab to Ruth from Prostitute to Christian. It has been a riveting story. Believe me, like my heart out for God said, because we can't take it. But glory be to God. I love transforming stories. It's just the, the journey for me. It feels like I am on it with you. Believe me, my daddy. And I love God for changing people. No matter where you are, what you have done, there is no condemnation. You just have to go to the one who does not judge what you've done. But he sees, he looks beyond your fault and sees your needs. That is God. So guys, if you want to find Shireen, her information is running on the bottom of the screen. You can contact her by email. She's on Facebook. She is on Instagram. There's also a number for the foundation that you can call. I don't think I add the number here, but I'll put it in the comments after. Thank you guys for tuning in. If you want to hear more stories like these. Also, if you're an author and you have a testimony to share, please send me an email or reach out to me. Shireen, do you have any um, shout outs you want to make? You want to thank the viewers for coming? Go ahead. Okay, I want to, you know, give a shout out to the Miracle of the Fetters and family. Mm -hmm. My husband. Mm -hmm. What's this? My friend. I know they're on here. I just can't see them. And a, and a big shout out to my mother. Mm. My holy mother. I love you, dear. Yes. And yes. thanks, guys, for watching and being a part of this with me, my church family. Amen. Amen. All right. So I think we can go now. I don't see any more comments apart from the last person, which is Elliston, who said, you are not a prostitute, you are a wife. And he says, thank, thank you, you, Shireen. Thank <laughs> you. All right. I'm blushing. <laughs> well, thank you, Shireen, for coming out. Um, thank you guys for your patience. I know we had a little glitch earlier, but a lot of you stayed on. God is going to reward your faithfulness. This is how faithful you are to be. When things are not working out and you just have to trust God and have faith, like faith for the impossible things, believe me, we soon have a faith talk here, but believe God. Believe God. From an immutable faith, we need to calm down. I am here. Okay. This is Melly Boo saying okay. she's here. Melibo, love you. And Patricia Perry says, Bless you. Hi, Sister Patricia Perry, thank you <laughs> for being a part of this life. I appreciate it so much. Woman of God, powerful. Mm -mm. She's a powerful. All right, all right. Mm -hmm. All right, just a reminder, guys, if you want to hear more stories like this, please send me an email, reach out, and we'll make it happen. If you want to see somebody on here, let me know. I'll try to make it happen. If you have a book you want to tell us about, reach out to me. I'll make it happen. Thank you guys for coming out. This has been Talk Truth series where we have real people, real talk, live. Big up on yourself. Come back again on Saturday for real connection with the men. Um, another great topic coming at that on that night. Guys, I'm going to close out. Thank you again. Thank you, Shireen. May the good Lord bless and keep you and cause his face to shine upon you, give you his peace, but no until he comes and the church and everyone here says, Amen. My love Amen. benediction. Amen. Sir, we love it. <laughs> I love right, benediction. Then. Good night, sis. Have a blessed night. Yes. Good night, everyone. Thanks for coming. Good night, everyone. Bye. -bye.